couple weeks ago, tomorrow I guess, uh, we went to Creston just for the weekend to do some kayaking. We didn't really have a plan, so we went Friday night we got there and decided we'd check out some places that we could go. We ended up seeing some combine in action, which was kind of cool because I'm not used to seeing people combine uh, in the mountains. And the Creston Valley is kind of cool. Uh, that way they have all different, real diverse, diverse crops. Uh, anything from wheat, wheat, barley, corn, and then your ginseng, and of course your fruit and stuff. That was cool. Really old combines loud uh, like the old days and uh, the Kootenai River is really cool and a lot of people that's where they they launch their motorboats so people are water skiing and, and uh, wakeboarding or surfing right on the river which is kind of cool it's it's not flowing very fast at that spot, and so it's it's going the opposite way. Like it's coming from the United States, which is weird because I had always assumed that the the it flowed into the United States, but uh, it does, and then it comes back up, and then into Kootenay Lake, and then into uh, out of Kootenay Lake, and then into the Columbia eventually and I'll show you that on a map it's kind of cool how the Columbia River and the Kootenai River kind of start at the same place and they go opposite directions Just hang on okay, so it doesn't show the whole Columbia but so the Kootenai River really starts up here the headwaters of the Kootenai and the headwaters of the Columbia is this Columbia Lake and look how close they get to each other like like really close there's just a it's not even a mountain range it's just kind of a high point in between the two so i don't know maybe they were connected at one time like thousands hundreds of thousands of years ago so it goes down here past fort steel and then this is a kukanusa which is kukani canada usa lake and it was a joint venture lake where they they dammed up the river basically and and so the lake uh in the fall it kind of just reverts to the river they let the water out and it's a dam so then it goes down here and then some other rivers go into it and then this is right here is where the where creston is and um and then it goes into Kootenai Lake and then back here and then the Columbia again. So the Columbia goes way, way up, up north and then back down. And the Kootenai goes down south and back up north. I thought that was interesting. I didn't realize that. Saturday morning when we got up, there was uh, a car show and a swap meet right out, right, basically in the parking lot. There's a green area. Uh, right behind the parking lot where we were in the hotel we were staying and I picked up these Centennial Alberta Centennial plates a set it's a full set so there's there are two of them okay here it is <laughs> and uh, I I thought that was it was just funny. I thought that I would uh, put this, use it as a prank and put it somewhere really, really, a really terrible parking spot, like for anybody, like on top of a great big rock or something. And uh, I, don't, I don't know where. And it kind of has to be on private land or else it's probably committing a crime or something. But uh, anyways, I, I thought that would be funny. If not, I might just put it down at the shooting range where I normally park. But uh, so yeah, I got it for five dollars. There was a whole bunch of other signs too, like "Do not enter" and stop signs. And I thought they they were decommissioned, so they're legal. Uh, I didn't realize that. It just depends on where you put them. 
Uh, it's the, oh, so. Yeah, there's my Centennial, the year I was born, Alberta plate. You can't really see this road, but so Creston is, is like over here. And um, so you take this old, this gravel road and that goes to where the landing, old ferry landing site is. And there's a parking lot. That's where we pumped up our inflatable kayaks. And and we we didn't know what was what it was gonna be like paddling upstream. And of course the wind happened to be blowing this way too, like this way. And so once we made this bend, we were going against current into the wind. And then we decided to take this little Y here. We didn't know it was Arrow Creek. We thought it was just a part of the Kootenai. It's still pretty wide there. Really nice. And then, it, of course, it was slower. And we made it to about here. And then right around here, this is where there's rapids. And it's supposed to be very scenic, but it was two and a half hours. And then... Julie's kayak started to leak air and so they headed back ahead of us and 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 the guy me and the other guy kind of took our time but caught up to him and once once we got into this it was really quite going uh, easy going I think it took less than three quarters of an hour to get from there to there uh, going with the current so Here's the, here's the old gravel road. And then, so some people launch their boat from this side, some people from this side. This side is, is a nicer launch. It's, a, it's got public parking and stuff. So there we go. Julie, uh, yeah, you're welcome. got a puppy and jump. I was videotaping. Okay. The wind's really blowing. I mean, it's not blowing like we're in Alberta, but it's blowing. This little floaty thing went around. There. K1 race. Melinda's winning. Julie's pulling ahead. John's coming the other way. Craig's in in his K2. Losing. Okay, here we are. Got the BC resident <laughs> guides. Professional kayak. Three K ones. Video. Okay, my butt was all right. I just just missed the Linda. Flash him. <laughs> A little bit windy, but it's the temperature's perfect. It's about 26, 27. Oh, here comes a pro. Way down there.
to do it. <laughs> yes. Next time I'm going to bring my motor. Either we switched directions or the wind did. I think the wind switched directions. Yeah, it's not very cold either. Like it's, it'd be nice for swimming if it wasn't for the sewer.